Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Monday, December 3rd, 2018. A big podcast, a lot to get into, a lot of news going on, and a lot of interesting results in the NFL, NBA, NHL, college hoops, and another trade, and the Cano trade's finally official in a minute, but let's start with football. And what was perhaps the wildest game of the day, the Giants defeat the Bears 30-27 to in overtime. This was a trap game for the Bears. They were trapped, looking ahead to their big Sunday night game against the Rams next week because they dropped the 8-4, and four, and the Giants go to 4-8. and eight. Eli Manning statistically did not have a great game. 19 of 35, 170 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Chase Daniel, the backup, 26 of 39, 285 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. I know a lot of people are going to point to him and say that he's the reason why the Bears lost. But he does deserve credit for bringing them back and the special teams with the onside kick that helped them force to tie the game. Daniel made all the plays late and brought the Bears back in it, but the Giants won the coin toss and they ended up being victorious. The Ravens defeat the Falcons 26-16. A big win for the Ravens to improve to 7-5. Atlanta drops to 4-8. Lamar Jackson, 12-21, 125 yards. See, like, he doesn't impress me. Like, he has low stats, and he really just isn't a factor to me. And he did have 75 yards on the ground in the rushing touchdown. And, by the way, Matt Ryan... 131 yards, 60 to 26 with a touchdown pass. Boy, that Falcons team. Disappointing season for them. I wonder if Dan Quinn is going to be let go at the end of the season. The Broncos defeat the Bengals 24 to 10. Big win for Denver to get back to 500 at 6 and 6. Cincinnati drops to 5 and 7. Case Keenum, 12 of 21, 151 yards and a touchdown. Jeff Driscoll, 25 of 38, 236 yards, a touchdown. And a pick. The Rams defeated the Lions 30-16. to The Rams improved to 11-1. Detroit drops to 4-8. Jared Goff, 17-33, of 33, 207 yards, a touchdown, and the pick. Matthew Stafford, 20-33, of 33, 245 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. The Cardinals defeated the Packers 20-17. to This led to the inevitable firing of Mike McCarthy. It's just that a lot of people thought this would happen at the end of the year, rather not in season, but it happened in season. And the Packers, as they dropped to 4-7-1, got a head start on their coaching search. And the Cardinals improved the 3-9. and nine. Josh Rosen, 11 of 26, 149 yards. Aaron Rodgers, 31 of 50, 233 yards and a touchdown. The Dolphins defeat the Bills, 21-17. The Dolphins improved the 6-6. Six six. Buffalo drops to 4-8. and eight. Ryan Tannehill... 16 of 2,437 yards, three touchdowns and a pick. Josh Allen, I thought, was pretty impressive. 18 of 33, 231 yards, two touchdowns and two picks. The way he led the Bills' comeback attempt was pretty neat, but they just fell short against a team that, let's face it, had the win to keep their playoff hopes alive. The Buccaneers defeat the Panthers 24-17, and the Panthers have lost four in a row as they dropped the 6-6. Tampa Bay quietly... A dark horse in that NFC wild card chase improved the five and seven. Jameis Winston, twenty of thirty, two hundred forty nine yards and two touchdowns. Cam Newton, twenty eight of forty one, three hundred yards, two touchdowns and four picks. The Jaguars defeat the Colts six zero. This was the ugliest game of the day as Jacksonville improves the four and eight. Indy drops the six and six. This was the trap game for the Colts. They're looking at the Houston next week. Cody Kessler, eighteen of twenty four hundred fifty yards. Andrew Luck, 33 of 52, 248 yards and a pick. The Texans defeat the Browns 29-13. The Texans go to 9-3. That's nine straight wins for them. And Cleveland drops to 4-7-1. and one. Deshaun Watson looking better and better by the week. 22 of 31, 224 yards and a touchdown. Baker Mayfield, 29 of 43, 397 yards, a touchdown, and three picks. The Titans defeat the Jets. 26-22, the Jets had to lead the majority of this game as the Titans came from behind and won. They're 6-6, six and six, lurking in that AFC wildcard hunt, and the Jets dropped the 3-9. and nine. Marcus Mariota, 20-35, of 285 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. 
Josh McCown, 17 of 30 to 128 yards in the pick. The Chiefs defeat the Raiders 40 to 33. The Chiefs 10 and 2, the Raiders 2 and 10. Patrick Mahomes, 23 of 38, 295 yards and four touchdowns. Derek Carr, 29 of 38, 285 yards and three touchdowns. The Patriots defeat the Vikings 24 to 10. The Pats go to 9 and 3. And Minnesota drops to 6-5 and 1. Tom Brady, 24 of 32, 311 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Kirk Cousins, 32 of 44, 201 yards, a touchdown and two picks. The Seahawks defeat the 49ers, 43-16. Seahawks, 7 and 5. San Francisco, 2 and 4. Russell Wilson, 11 of 17, 185 yards and four touchdowns. Nick Mullins, 30 of 48, 414 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. And last but not least, Sunday night, the Chargers defeat the Steelers 33 to 30, courtesy of a field goal by Michael Bagley as time expires. 29 yard, a courtesy of not one but two offsides penalties, which led to two missed kicks by Bagley. And eventually, the Chargers get the win. The funny thing is that the Steelers were offsides on the third kick, but they denied it because the kick was made. And as Philip Rivers says. I think that was their way of trying to freeze the kicker. As the Chargers got a huge win. This is their biggest win in a long time. They go to 9-3. and three. Pittsburgh drops to 7-4-1. and one. Phillip Rivers, 26 of 36, 299 yards and two touchdowns. Ben Roethlisberger, 29 of 45, 281 yards, so two touchdowns and two, one pick. Tonight we have the... Redskins at the Eagles, 8-15 ESPN. Philly is a six-point favorite. I do think Philly will win the game. They're the better team. And the Redskins are starting Colt McCoy, who's a journeyman and who is not very good. And he put up his yards against Dallas on Thanksgiving, but it was mostly garbage yards. I think that's the same scenario that's going to be in play here in Philadelphia. And I really think that the Eagles are going to come out with a lot to prove here because that Giants game was like a big wake-up call from there down 16 at halftime or near halftime, and they came from behind and won that game. And I think this team is poised to go on a run and give Dallas a run for its money in the NFC East. And the thought of two NFC East teams in the playoffs was not possible about a month ago. It's possible now. Dallas and Philly, I think, have a chance of both getting in because I think the NFC wildcard pitcher is murky at best with Minnesota losing and Carolina losing. And Seattle, to me, is the team that's separating itself. And I think if Minnesota wins this week, I think that it can be even more murkier because Seattle would then drop to... 7-6. Seven and six. Minnesota would then improve to seven, five, and one. I'm talking, looking ahead a little bit the next week, and then let's say a couple of those Merck teams, like the winner of Dallas Philly, or I'm sorry, the loser of Dallas Philly, because then the winner would be in first place or have the inside track in the division, depending on who wins and loses that game. And then there's just a lot of intrigue within the NFC playoff picture, and then same with the AFC. We'll get into that more another day. The reason why I got into the NFC playoff conversation here is because the Eagles, I think, are very much alive in the mix for a wild card, let alone the NFC East if Dallas falls apart. So it should be an interesting game tonight. I do think Philly will be awoken, or I should say has awoken, and will win the game. I think there's a lot of bad karma with the Redskins, especially the fact that they signed Reuben Foster and... I just think that's a sign for bad karma. And let's move on. College hoops. Some interesting results from yesterday. Not a big slate. Number six, Tennessee defeats AM Corpus Christi 79 51. As Tennessee goes to 6 1, AM Corpus Christi improves or drops to 4 and 4. Arizona defeats UConn 76-72, an impressive win for the Wildcats as they go to 6-2. UConn drops to 6-2. Colgate defeats Florida Gulf Coast 74-56. Jam, Florida Gulf Coast has been a disappointment so far. They dropped to 2-8. And, 
Colgate improves to 6 and 3. Delaware defeats Columbia 87-86 in double overtime. Delaware goes to 7 and 2. Columbia drops to 1 and 5. Sacred Heart defeats Lafayette 64-62. Sacred Heart 4 and 5. Lafayette 2 and 5. Valparaiso defeats UC Riverside 82-73. Valparaiso 5 and 3. Riverside 2 and 7. Missouri defeats UCF 64-62 in overtime. Missouri with the big win gets the 4 and 3. UCF drops to 6 and 2. SMU defeats Oral Roberts 79-67. SMU goes to 6 and 3. Oral Roberts drops to 3 and 7. Southern Miss defeats Rust 106-46. Southern Miss improves to 6 and 2. East Carolina defeats Maryland Eastern 70 to 47. East Carolina 6 and 4. Maryland Eastern Shore 1 and 8. Nebraska defeats Illinois 75 to 60. Nebraska 7-1, Illinois 2 and 6. Number 16 Ohio State defeats Minnesota 79-59. Ohio State improves to 7 and 1. Minnesota drops to 6 and 2. Washington defeats Santa Barbara 67-63. Washington 6 and 2, Santa Barbara 6 and 2. UCLA defeats Loyola Marymount 82-58. UCLA 6 and 2, Loyola Marymount 8 and 1. And that was their first loss of the year. And let's look ahead to Tonight's slate, not a big slate. You have on Fox Sports 1, Big Ten play number 18, Iowa, at number 10, Michigan State. That is a big game in the Big Ten. I think Michigan State will win the game. Liberty at Georgetown, 7 o'clock, Morgan State at number 4, Virginia, Niagara at Pitt, Texas Southern at Georgia, Vermont and George Mason, UMBC, Coppin State, St. Joseph's Brooklyn against St. Francis Brooklyn. Reinhardt East Tennessee. 7.30 you have Delaware State hosting Cairn. 8 o'clock Big Ten Network. Number 12 Wisconsin hosts Rutgers. Florida State hosts Troy. Florida State's number 11. Iowa State, North Dakota State, Northwestern State, Texas A&M. 8.30, 8.30, Fox Sports 1, Florida A&M at DePaul. 9 o'clock, College of Idaho at Montana. And then at 10 o'clock, Cal State Northridge at Pepperdine. The new rankings are out for college basketball. Number one's Gonzaga. They're 8-0. Two is Kansas. They're 6-0. Three is Duke. They're 7-1. Four, Virginia at 7-0. Five is Michigan at 8-0. Six is Nevada at eight and zero. Seven is Tennessee at six and one. Eight is Auburn at six and one. Nine is Kentucky at seven and one. Ten is Michigan State at six and two. I think they're overranked. Ten is Florida State at six and one. Twelve is Wisconsin at seven and one. Thirteen is Texas Tech at seven and zero. That's a deserving ranking. Fourteen North Carolina at six and two. I think that's too high. 15 Virginia Tech at 6 and 1, 16 Kansas State at 6 and 0. I'm sorry, 6 and 1. 17 Buffalo at 7 and 0, 18 Iowa at 6 and 1. 19 Ohio State at 7 and 1. 20s Arizona State at 7 and 0. That's a deserving ranking. 21 Villanova at 6 and 2. 22 is Mississippi State at 6 and 1. 23 is Maryland at 7 and 1. 24 is Nebraska at 7 and 1 and 25 is Furman at 8 and 0. Welcome to the rankings, Furman. And others receiving votes. You have Purdue, Syracuse, Marquette, Iowa State, Texas, Creighton, St. John's, Houston, North Carolina State, Indiana, Arizona, Louisville, Clemson, TCU, Radford, Oregon, Arkansas, UCLA, Notre Dame, Florida, Boston College, Oklahoma, and Davidson. All right. Speaking of rankings, the college football playoff final rankings are out your playoff teams as predicted number one Alabama number two Clemson number three Notre Dame and number four Oklahoma five Georgia six Ohio State seven Michigan eight UCF nine Washington ten Florida 11 LSU 12 Penn State 13 Washington State 14 Kentucky 15 Texas 16 West Virginia 17 Utah 18 Mississippi State 19 Texas A&M 20, Syracuse, 21, Fresno State, 22, Northwestern. Don't like five lost teams in the college football playoff rankings, but I guess if you're in a conference championship game, maybe that's an exception. 23, Missouri, 24, Iowa State, and 25, Boise State. 
and the Sugar Bowl, Texas and Georgia. In the Fiesta Bowl, you have UCF and LSU. The Rose Bowls, Washington and Ohio State. And the, the Peach Bowl, you have Florida and Michigan. Why do I feel like Florida and Michigan hook up all the time in big spots? Is it me or do they always put Florida and Michigan in bowl games against one another? I remember these two teams played on the season opener a few years back and Michigan beat Florida. I believe that was Jim Wackelwain's last year at Florida. And I feel like these two teams meet up in bowls every year. It's just so bizarre. And another bowl game that I thought was intriguing as well as many others is Valero Alamo Bowl between Iowa State and Washington State. That's going to be a fun game. I'm actually going to run through the rest of these bowl games right now. The 4 o'clock playoff game is Clemson-Notre Dame on ESPN on the 29th. The 8 o'clock game on ESPN is Alabama and Oklahoma. The national title game is at 8 o'clock on ESPN on January 7th. Saturday, December 15th, you have the Celebration Bowl between North Carolina a and and Alcorn State, New Mexico Bowls, North Texas, and Utah State, the Cure Bowl, Tulane, and Louisiana, the Vegas Bowl is Fresno and Arizona State, the Camellia Bowl is Georgia Southern and Eastern Michigan, the New Orleans Bowl is Middle Tennessee and Appalachian State, the Boca Raton Bowl is UAB and Northern Illinois, the Frisco Bowl is San Diego State and Utah, or I'm sorry, Ohio, the Grispilla Bowl is Marshall and South Florida, December 21st, the Bahamas Bowl is FIU and Toledo. The Idaho Potato Bowl is Western Michigan and BYU. And by the way, Frisco's on the 19th, Boca Raton's on the 18th, and then the first couple bowls I listed are all on the 15th. December 22nd, the Saturday, you have the Birmingham Bowl between Memphis and Wake Forest. The Armed Forces Bowl is Houston and Army. The Dollar General Bowl is Buffalo and Troy. The Hawaii Bowl is Louisiana Tech and Hawaii. On December 26th, the day after Christmas, you have the First Responder Bowl, Boston College and Boise State. That's a nice one. Boston College fell apart at the end of the year. Boise State's a pretty good team. The Quick Lane Bowl is Minnesota Georgia Tech. Cheez-It Bowl is Cal and TCU. The 27th of December, you have... The Independence Bowl, Temple and Duke. Pinstripe Bowls, Miami and Wisconsin. The Texas Bowls, Baylor and Vanderbilt. The 28th of December, you have the Music City Bowl, Purdue and Auburn. The Camping World Bowl, West Virginia and Syracuse. These two teams hooked up in the Pinstripe Bowl in 2012. So that's interesting. And these two teams were obviously Big East rivals back in the day before West Virginia moved to the Big 12. And the Alamo Bowl I just mentioned is... Uh, Iowa State and Washington State. That's my favorite non-New Year's Six game. And then the 29th of December, I already mentioned the Peach Bowl between Florida and Michigan. The Belk Bowl is South Carolina, Virginia. The Arizona Bowl is Arkansas State and Nevada. And then the playoff game at 4 o'clock is Clemson and Notre Dame. That's the Cotton Bowl from Dallas. And then the Orange Bowl from... Miami is Alabama and Oklahoma. That's the late night game on ESPN. That's going to be so much fun, that doubleheader. And I'm happy that they moved the college football playoff to that Saturday before New Year's Eve, which is on the 29th. And then the 30th, you have NFL football week 17. And then New Year's Eve, I think they did the right thing by not putting it on New Year's Eve because a lot of people are going to be watching the New Year's Rock and Eve show, and obviously Disney Airwaves airs that as well as the college football playoffs, and they don't want the ratings to be going head to head. So, good decision by ESPN to put the college football playoff on the 29th. So, Monday, December 31st, you have in the Military Bowl, Cincinnati and Virginia Tech, the Hyundai Sun Bowl, Stanford and Pitt, the Red Box Bowl, Michigan State and Oregon. The Liberty Bowl, Missouri and Oklahoma State. The Holiday Bowl, Northwestern and Utah. 
and the Gator Bowl, you have North Carolina State and Texas A&M. New Year's Day Outback Bowl, you have Mississippi State and Iowa. The Citrus Bowls, Kentucky and Penn State, that's actually a decent game too. I already mentioned the Fiesta Bowl between LSU and UCF. I mentioned the Rose Bowl already between Washington and Ohio State. And the Sugar Bowl I mentioned already between Texas and Georgia. I really thought that West Virginia was being the Sugar Bowl over Texas because I thought West Virginia would be ahead of Texas because they beat them head to head. But no, the Big 12 championship game represented gets chosen ahead of the team that beat them head to head and had the same record and Texas had more losses than West Virginia. But it is what it is. They thought that Texas was better than West Virginia. And you could argue that because let's face it, if Will Greer doesn't make that two-point conversion in that game, then Texas a season. It's not that Texas had a bad year, but it would have been even better if they made that stop against who could very well be a Heisman finalist. The Heisman finalists are being announced tonight in Will Greer and the Mountaineers. So quick college football playoff recap and bowl games for you too. Now I'm going to get to NBA results from yesterday. Wasn't a heavy slate. Only six games. You had the Lakers defeat the Suns 120-96. to That was a matinee game. Lakers improved to 14-9. Phoenix drops to 4-19. The Pelicans defeat the Hornets 119-109. The Pelicans improved to 12-12. Charlotte drops to 11-12. The Heat defeat the Jazz 102-100. Miami big win improves to 9-13. Utah drops to 11-13. and 13. 76ers defeat the Grizzlies 103-95. The 76ers are just beating everybody. They improve to 17-8. Memphis drops to 13-9. The Mavericks defeat the Clippers 114-110. The Mavs, without Luka Doncic, improve to 11-10. And, and the Clippers drop to 15-7. That was a complete trap game for the Clippers. They probably thought they were going to win that game once they learned that Luka Doncic wasn't playing. They're obviously looking ahead. A little bit. And last but not least, the Spurs defeat the Trailblazers 131-118. A fantastic bounce-back win for the San Antonio Spurs. They improved to 11-12. and Portland drops to 13-10. and Tonight's slate, you have seven games. On NBA TV at 7 o'clock, you have the Thunder at the Pistons. 7.30, you have the Wizards at the Knicks. I think that is a trap game for the Wizards. I think the Knicks get the home win. And I mentioned the game on NBA TV. I think that's a trap game, too, for Oklahoma City because I like the trait there. And also at 7.30, you have the Warriors at the Hawks. Stephen Curry's back. Draymond Green, I don't think, is back yet. And will be back for this game. Um, Cavs, Nets, Nuggets, Raptors is a good one from Toronto. 8 o'clock, Rockets, Timberwolves. This could be a trap game for Houston. They're getting themselves right a little bit. They got the big win against... San Antonio on national TV Friday night. And then they killed the Bulls on Saturday. I'll get to the Bulls in a second because they made some news today. But they seem like a team that's getting right. Chris Paul's back. And this could be a trap spot for them. Tim Rose playing a little better after trading away Jimmy Butler, which I think is weird. And last but not least, at 8 o'clock, you have the Clippers at the Pelicans. This could be a look-ahead spot for the Pelicans as they are favored by two and a half. They're probably like, oh, Clippers, second night of a back-to-back. But I like the Pelicans to take care of business there at home. And if I were to pick between the Rockets and the Timberwolves, I think the Rockets avoid the trap. But I do not like the spot for the Wizards or the OKC Thunder on the road. And the Bulls, I just mentioned them a minute ago, they had fired Fred Hoiberg today, which was my pick to be the first coach fired this year. Ty Lu ended up being the first coach fired, but, but Fred Hoiberg also gets the axe. This was a long time coming. I don't think he was meant to be an NBA head coach. He only made the playoffs one year with the Bulls, and that was the year that it was kind of messy. They had both Rajon Rondo and Dwayne Wade. It was Jimmy Butler's last year with the Bulls. There was just a lot of drama on that team, and they nearly upset the Celtics. They are up 2-0 on the Celtics, and then they folded, lost four straight, and Boston ended up advancing that year. 
I think that was the 2016-17 season. And he really hasn't done anything to impress me. And I know they missed the playoffs in his first season there. Now it's Derrick Rose's last season with the Bulls. But that was just a tumultuous situation. And that was just not a good hire from the start, I don't think. I actually was wrong here. I actually thought that he was going to work out, but I just think that he's meant for college. And I think a big-name college school will hire him in a minute. And he'll turn around a big-name college school next year for sure. Um, One firing I forgot to mention, the Green Bay Packers fired Mike McCarthy yesterday after their loss to the... Arizona Cardinals. I think that this was well overdue as well. Aaron Rodgers and McCarthy were clearly not getting along. There's some theories out there that Rodgers was trying to uh, play poorly on purpose to get him fired. I'm not sure if that's really true or not. Joe Philbin's now the intern coach. I do not think that Philbin should be the new head coach under any circumstances. He was awful with the Dolphins. And to me, he's just a good coordinator rather than a good coach. And now they get a jump start on the coach market as well as the Browns. But I think that the Browns are going to be looking hard at Mike McCarthy. And then there's going to be other jobs open. You know the Jets job's probably going to open. Maybe Washington if they fall apart. Maybe Jay Gruden's let go. There's going to be other ones that are open, but... If there's somebody that wants to get into the NFL, there's a job open in Green Bay with a quarterback that's still pretty darn good in Aaron Rodgers. NHL. Last night was a six-game slate. The Jets defeated the Rangers 4-3 in a shootout. Rangers actually had a 3 not the lead going into the third period. They blew it and lost. They dropped the 13-12-3. Jets improved to 16-8-2. The Ducks defeat the Capitals 6-5. This was... A high-scoring affair. The Ducks they improved to 14-10 and 5. Washington drops to 15-8 and 3. The Sharks defeat the Canadians 3 to 1. San Jose improves to 13-10 and 5. Montreal drops to 12-10 and 5. The Avs beat the Red Wings 2 nothing. The Avalanche improved to 16-6 and 5. Detroit drops to 12-12 and 3. The Flames defeat the Blackhawks 3 to 2. Calgary improves to 16-9 and 2. Chicago drops to 9-14 and 5. The Kings defeat the Hurricanes 2 nothing trap game for Carolina as they drop to 12-10-4. Kings improve to 10-16-1. Three games tonight. You have at 7 o'clock the Lightning at the Devils, 8 o'clock the Sabres at the Predators, and 8.30 the Oilers at the Stars. The Robinson Cano trade is official. The, they agreed to trade him to the New York Mets along with Edwin Diaz. In a whopping seven-player deal. I discussed this a lot yesterday and the past few days on the podcast. Going back to the Mariners is Jay Bruce and Anthony Swarzak in terms of major leaguers who I think will end up being trade bait for them down the road. I'll get to more on Swarzak in a minute, actually. And then prospects that are going back are Jared Kalenic and Justin Dunn, who were 2018 and 2016 first-round picks by the Mets, respectively, and Gerson Batista, who's a hard-throwing right-hander who could be a good reliever someday. I think both teams did a nice job in this deal. The Mets are obviously better now. And then this will better the Mariners down the road. As they get some prospects in the deal, and then they get two more possible trade assets in Bruce and Swarzak. And speaking of trades, the Philadelphia Phillies have traded for Gene Segura, as Segura has agreed to waive his trade clause. And going back to Seattle in the deal is prospect shortstop J.P. Crawford, who is highly touted. Hasn't panned out yet. Maybe a change of scenery will help him. And 
Anthony Swarzak's reportedly going to the Phillies in this deal, too. Which, like I said, I think the Mariners want to trade Jay Bruce, too. And they already shipped off Swarzak, apparently, in that deal to Philadelphia. And what this means for Philly is that Gene Segura is going to, in all likelihood, be their shortstop. So if they are to sign Manny Machado, he will be playing third base unless they move Segura to second base. And Juan Nicasio, it might also be involved in this trade as well, according to John Heyman of the MLB Network, as he will be headed to the Phillies, possibly. So it's either going to be Nicasio or Swarzak going to Philly with Gene Segura, and J.P. Crawford's going the other way. And there's more in this deal, too, that hasn't been reported. I'll discuss that more on tomorrow's podcast. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. My best bet. As this one will be sponsored by DraftKings. I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles on the money line. The Raptors on the money line with the Warriors. And in college basketball, Michigan State, Georgetown, Pitt, Georgia, UMBC, and Florida State. Plus 3.34, wagering a dollar to win $3.34 with a payout of $4.34. And that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping the Monday night game, college basketball, NBA, NHL, And anything else that happens in the world of sports, I'll also be doing my power rankings for NFL. And we'll get more into the Segura trade as more pieces will probably be reported by the time I do this podcast tomorrow. Hope you guys have a great day, everybody.